You shouldn't have to blow your own horn. You should leave that for someone else to do. Ever pondered the timeless debate of beauty being in the eye of the beholder or black don't crack? Well, what if I told you there's a universal agreement in the air, especially when it comes to the dazzling beauty of black actresses from the 60s and 70s? Yes, you heard that right. Could it be that we finally found something we all agree on? Intrigued yet? He didn't show up. I guess I didn't know him as well as I thought I did, Lorraine. Have you heard about Brenda Sykes? Discovered on a dating show game of all places. Brenda Sykes didn't just waltz into the 70s, she strutted in, landing roles in those oh so dramatic black exploitation movies. We're still No, we're not. Because let's face it, I'm famous. No. Sykes became the talk of the town, dishing out performances that had everyone glued to their seats. She wasn't just an actress. She was a beacon for black culture, offering a mirror for black audiences everywhere to see themselves in all their glory on the silver screen. Trailblazer? Absolutely. Fashion icon? Without a doubt. In fact, she had 70s kids scrambling to mimic her style. With a presence that screams elegance, Brenda Sykes had it all. Great Grace, finesse, and an aura that whispered, I'm the moment. To this day, Brenda continues to sparkle, inspiring legions of fans with her timeless beauty and extraordinary talent. She's not just an icon, she's a legend that keeps on giving. Well, I like Lamont but I like you too. And I like smoked pork bun. <laughs> Next on our time-traveling TV tuner, we land on Judy Pace, who also spun the wheel of love as a bachelorette on the dating game. Let's face it, making it onto a dating show back then was basically the universe's stamp of approval on your hotness. Judy Pace isn't just a name. It's a legend that graced the screens in hits like Peyton Place. Lou, there's something strange here, something that just doesn't add up. Something kind of unreal. And the young lawyers. He's often fed and balanced meals. Why, once I heard he ate cereal for three meals for several days. Not to mention her cameo in the 1966 Batman, Days of Our Lives, Tarzan, and Good Times, just dropping a few titles to impress you. My kids did this for me. They now have a new title for me. It's called Judy the First. And I was like, okay, okay, what is that? He said, Mommy, you were the first black villainess on TV, and the first black family of drama was Ruby D and Glenn Turman. I said, yeah, okay. And, Mommy, you were the first black lawyer on TV. And, Mommy, you were the first person to have a black congressional film. Brian, Brian Song, Song. Yes. and mommy, you had a second congressional film, mm -hmm. and that was Cotton Comes Cotton to Harlem. Comes to and Harlem. mommy, Cotton Comes to Harlem was the first blockbuster film and ushered in the black That's film amazing. renaissance of the 70s. Right. And there was a whole list, there was, there's more. The secret to eternal youth, Judy's got it. But good luck getting her to spill the beans. She's still turning heads on the red carpet flaunting the age-defying glam and curves that make us wonder if she's secretly guarding the fountain of youth. Judy Pace, ladies and gentlemen, still serving us looks and leaving us all in awe. And from now on, no matter what happens, you'll be a man for the rest of your natural life. Sliding into the spotlight next on our roster of TV royalty is none other than Rosalind Cash. Your eyes may shine and your teeth may grit. There'll be a lot of gravy to get. <laughs> Ever heard of her? Rosalind Cash, a towering figure in TV history, burst onto the scene with her role in The Omega Man. There are others, I guess, if Matthias and his brethren haven't killed them all. Born in December 1938, her career didn't stop there. She graced multiple hit shows like The Cosby Show, What's Happening, and Golden Girls, among others. I love Michael. I don't care about his color. Showcasing her versatility and rejecting stereotypical roles. Beyond her undeniable talent, Rosalind was known for her spunk, intelligence, and resilience. I don't really have an attitude towards the industry. I've spent so much time trying to keep my equilibrium and keep my mental health and spiritual health and physical health that I feel like I'm a queen and I feel that I would prevail. I feel my life is successful, that it works. I feel that I'm very strong. Despite her passing from cancer at 56 in 1995, Rosalind's legacy shines on, reminding us of the importance of forging our own paths and doing so with style. You shouldn't have to blow your own horn. You should leave that for someone else to do. 
Guess who also sashayed her way onto this list? The incomparable Eartha Kitt. <laughs> you might recognize her from that's the cheeky Christmas classic, Santa Baby. Santa Baby, just slip a sable under the tree. The enigmatic Eartha Kitt, whose age was shrouded in as much mystery as her purring voice, had everyone scratching their heads until some nosy students in South Carolina dug up her birth certificate in 98. Lo and behold, the cat was out of the bag. After all these years, found a birth certificate. I was not able to find it myself because it's under another name. The last name is Eartha May Kit Dash Fields. And I'm looking for Kit. On the paper, it says Fields. So in this last year, I was asked to do a benefit for the Columbia University of South Carolina as a joke. I said, why don't you ask the students of that college to do a research on Earth Kit? Maybe they can find a piece of paper that says at least I exist. <laughs> well, they did. And they found this piece of paper. And it was also very extremely interesting to me because when they called me and told me from this house of um, what is there, but these papers are in, the lady calls my house and she says, oh, she called my daughter and she said, do we have this birth certificate? And we are quite sure it's Eartha Kitt's birth certificate. She was born on January 17th, 1927. Fast forward to 1968, and Earth is at a White House luncheon throwing shade like it's sunny, telling Lady Bird Johnson her husband sending America's finest to get shot in Vietnam. Was involved with a group called Rebels with a Cause who came to my dressing room at the National Theater and asked me to be their spokesman because Washingtonians do not have representatives, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I went around Washington and I saw what they were showing me, the poverty-stricken areas, areas that had been built in 1937 that hadn't even been paved, and the people were living in very squalorly conditions and not even hot water. And they showed me what was happening to the poverty money, which was not being used quite properly. And we were responsible for getting something like five areas of Washington cleaned up within about two years' time. So when I got the invitation, it was because Hubert Humphrey had referred me to Mrs. Johnson because of the kind of work that I have been doing and also the fact that in each country that I travel into, the boys who had been running away from America because they did not want to be involved in the Vietnamese War because they feel that we should not have been involved in the Vietnamese War would also come to my dressing room and tell me what their feelings were. Suddenly some foreign matter snatches them away from us and throws them off into a war that says thou shalt kill, thou shalt steal, thou shalt do everything against the Ten Commandments. Don't you think it might have something to do with our involvement in Vietnam? Well, I don't know how long I talked. But suddenly the room became extremely quiet. But when I sat down, it was also terribly interesting to me because the lady who was sitting to my right put her hand on my thigh and whispered to me with her head down. And this is a free democratic country that we're living in, right? Yeah. We're not supposed to be living in fear of our government. But with her head down, she whispered to me, thank you, Eartha, for saying what you're saying. We would all like to say the same thing, but unfortunately, most of our husbands work for Mr. Johnson. So a lot of those women who were there were not outsiders. They were in with Mrs. Johnson. So it was all like a propaganda for Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Because I didn't even know it until 1975 that I was suddenly cut off from the American public. Talk about a mic drop moment that made the first lady cry. This bold move got Eartha exiled from the U.S. entertainment scene faster than you can say Catwoman. She spent nearly a decade wowing crowds overseas because, let's face it, you can't keep a good cat down. But guess who came crawling back? The U.S. baby. By 78, Jimmy Carter rolled out the red carpet, welcoming her back with open arms after she killed it on Broadway. Only Eartha Kitt could turn a comeback into a grand entrance. Tragically, the world lost this radiant jewel on Christmas Day of 2008. But let's not dwell on the sadness because Eartha Kitt's legacy, her unparalleled beauty, her magnetic talent, and yes, those Santa Baby vibes, lives on, eternally captivating and inspiring. I told Corey not to leave the apartment and not to open the door for anyone. In the star-studded sky of Hollywood legends, is there a star that twinkles quite like Diane Carroll? Girlfriend as pretty as you are? Yes. She's a white girl. It might be hard to find. All these white girls look alike. If beauty had a hotline, Diane would be its perpetual on-call operator. Elegance? Check. Charm? Double check. Grace that can make a swan look clumsy? Triple check. Was her love life a soap opera? You bet. The early 1970s, a whirlwind romance with David Frost, Britain's chat show king. 
They even got engaged in November 1972, but she calls it quits and marries Freddie Glussman a week later. Talk about a fast turnaround. How long did that last, you ask? Let's just say it was more of a sprint than a marathon. Was I married four times? Yes, I was. I confess I was married four times. And the reason I'm smiling is because I spent a lot of time giving the men involved in some of these relationships a very bad reputation. I'm not saying that I ever said anything that wasn't true. It was all true, except that the reason that this one human being kept choosing selection poor, not able to evaluate whether this should be a friendship or this should be a marriage. I wanted to be married. And so when the opportunity was there to do so, I did it. I had not lived alone. Quite frankly, I didn't know how to do that. I'm not sure that I know how to do it today. But I did think that it was time for me to stop and try to answer these questions for myself. Fast forward to 2008, and she drops her second autobiography, The Legs Are the Last to Go. The title alone makes you wonder, doesn't it? In this tell-all, she revisits the late 60s and early 70s, revealing a rocky romance with actor Don Marshall, known for Julia and Land of the Giants from 1968. This wasn't just any tumult. We're talking a storm of physical and mental turmoil. Makes you think, if her legs were the last to go, what was the first? But let's peel back the curtain on that dazzling exterior momentarily. Beneath the surface, Carol was a veritable powerhouse of acting and activism. She did both with the kind of flair that earned her a Tony, a Golden Globe, and not one, not two, but five Emmy nods. Is there anything this woman couldn't do? Tragically, Diane Carroll's final curtain call came in October 2019 after a valiant fight against breast cancer. You want to spit on me and make me crawl? Strutting from the high-octane world of black exploitation flicks straight into our hearts as the epitome of fierce, independent womanhood, Pam Greer has that special kind of sparkle that could light up a room. Or let's be real, an entire decade. And then maybe you get to feel what I feel. Death is too easy for you, bitch. I want you to suffer. With her iconic cropped shirts and afros that perfectly accentuate her stunning features, Pam didn't just walk into the scene. She owned it, taking the term feminine badassery to a whole new level. Since she was knee-high to a grasshopper, she's been throwing punches and kicks like it's her job, mastering the ancient arts of karate, aikido, kung fu, and jiu-jitsu. Basically, she's the human equivalent of a Swiss army knife, if one of the tools was always set to ninja mode. Developing, audience development, accepting a black woman or woman of color to a genre and being accepted as action, karate, you know, kung fu, qigong, white tiger, all of these martial martial art positions that I learned. So I was in the next movie and I was a Black Panther in the next movie and the next movie. I said, it's tuition. And I never thought I'd continue. I always plan on going back to school. In 2012-2013, she made her grand entrance into the National Multicultural Western Heritage Museum Hall of Fame. She strutted her stuff all the way to runner-up in the Miss Colorado Universe beauty pageant, proving she's not just a threat in a dojo, but also on the catwalk. Let's talk about trophies, shall we? Emmy, Golden Globe, SAG Awards, you name it, Pam's probably been nominated for it. That's no small feat in a career that's basically a master class in being brilliantly dazzling 24-7. You took my sister Nettie away from me. You knew she was the only somebody in the world who loved me. Whoopi Goldberg truly is a testament to the idea that beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. She took an early sabbatical from high school, preferring the school of hard knocks and harder substances. Her love story began in rehab, where she fell for her drug counselor. Talk about taking your work home. No, sir, let's talk about your mama, who's so dumb she got hit by a parked car. After cleaning up her act and ditching the hubby, she zipped over to California in 74, throwing her energy into the San Diego Repertory Company. Adopting the stage name Whoopi Cushion, she hinted at a career filled with laughs. Before the red carpets rolled out, her resume read like a game of career roulette. Bank teller by day, bricklayer by twilight, and mortuary assistant by midnight. In a twist fit for a screenplay, 
While moonlighting as a waitress in 1978 at the Big Kitchen Cafe, she witnessed PSA flight number 182's tragic descent from the heavens, following a less than graceful tango in the sky. This sky-high drama left such a mark on her that she vowed to keep her feet firmly on the ground, possibly fearing she might get a too-close encore performance. Sporting a distinct flair and an unmistakable laugh, Whoopi's talent is so vast it's almost intimidating. She's the beauty that makes you toss out the rule book and scribble new definitions. Whoopi is also one of the elite few to clinch the EGOT. That's an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, for those not in the know. As if her shelf wasn't groaning under the weight of those accolades, she's also a devoted philanthropist and activist. Turn around slowly. Gloria Hendry stands tall among cinema's most unforgettable icons, her roles in exploitation films echoing a legacy of sheer elegance and undeniable skill. I ain't your mama. Her talent was as natural as breathing, leaving audiences in awe. Before lighting up the big screen, Gloria turned heads as a Playboy bunny in New York, a gig that certainly sets the bar high for glamour. From those bunny ears to her debut in For the Love of Ivy, Gloria revealed that beneath her stunning looks beats the heart of a resilient, graceful, and timeless icon, inspiring countless admirers with her beauty. It gave me the courage and the security and the confidence to do all the things that I did. Gloria's dazzling allure might just have something to do with her rich multi-ethnic tapestry. Seminole Indian, Chinese, Creek Indian, Irish, and African. Could this blend be the ultimate recipe for radiance? Whether she's stealing the spotlight on the red carpet or simply running errands, Gloria Hendry, even at 75, continues to be an absolute vision, proving that true beauty knows no age. Is that you reading, Kizzy? <laughs> Let's lock this in. No take backs. Leslie Uggams is the epitome of everlasting allure. Kicking off her stage career at the tender age of six, we've witnessed her transformation from a sweet ingenue to a powerhouse diva, doubling down on her talents as both a singer and an actress. I got a shout, I just found out what life's about. With a trophy cabinet to envy, Leslie boasts a smile that could light up Broadway and eyes so captivating, you'd hardly believe she played a blind woman in Deadpool. Yet, she absolutely nailed that role, didn't she? Sporting skin that defies the ages, a smile that dazzles like a spotlight, and hair that's always in a state of perfection, Leslie Uggams is out here setting the beauty bar sky high. Count us in as devoted fans, eagerly taking notes on how to glow like Leslie. But what a way to do it. I did it. I suppose I called down to room service and asked them to send up one killer. Teresa Graves shines on our list as a beacon of both beauty and skill. Fresh from high school, where she clinched the title of most talented in her senior year, Teresa was a force to be reckoned with from the get-go. You coming in to say hello? She dazzled us as the formidable, stylish Christy Love in the TV series Get Christy Love, a role she infused with sass and allure. However, her journey took a turn as her faith, having become one of Jehovah's Witnesses, led her away from roles that conflicted with her beliefs, eventually leading to her retirement. Yet, Teresa's indelible mark of talent and her stunning looks remain undeniable. Tragically, her life was cut short in 2002 due to a house fire. And I would hear your voice from all parts of the ship. And my fears would fade. Nichelle Nichols, a name that resonates even if you've been chilling under a boulder for a while. This icon, whose career dazzled us for over a half a century, is a legend in her own right. Say, Lieutenant, be careful what you wish for. You may get it. With a collection of accolades and a spot on the Walk of Fame under her belt, the Star Trek sensation brought a new era of representation to the screen. Seeing a black woman like Lieutenant Uhura, smart, capable, and professional, was a game changer in the franchise and beyond. Nichols wasn't just about the brains. She was a beauty icon, too, 
Whether rocking sleek bobs, intricate braids, or that signature bold red lip paired with flawless cat eyeliner, she was the epitome of glam. Add to that a figure that could turn heads and a smile that could light up the darkest of space. Nichelle Nichols was truly out of this world. Though we lost this screen queen to heart failure in 2022, Nichelle Nichols' legacy is as enduring and inspiring as the star she navigated as Lieutenant Uhura. Her journey continues to inspire and remind us of the power of representation and grace.